Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. If you like Double Dragon like I do, then you probably played Double Dragon 3, The Sacred Stones. Uh, this game's got some controversy behind it. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people think it's great, some people think it's broken. But we're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about the final boss in this game and how you can beat her without taking any damage. Stick around. Alright, so you have just kicked the mummy the last kick and released the beast. That is the final boss of this game. Uh, Cleopatra, or uh, as in the US re version, it was Princess Noreem. I don't know, it's your, it's your girlfriend's name, Marion, spelled backwards, because they're incredibly creative. Before we can fight her, uh, we really need to know what she can do. Now, when I do these no damage playthroughs, uh, the first thing I like to do is, well, figure out exactly what the enemy can do to me so that I can formulate a strategy and how to avoid their attacks before I even decide how I'm going to attack. Um, with Double Dragon, most of the enemies work the same way. Uh, they want to line up with you vertically on the Y axis, and then their, their code runs to determine what attack they're going to do. It may depend on how far they are away. If they're on the opposite side of the screen, they may choose to run at you. If they're really close and close enough for their melee attack, they'll do their melee attack. If they're a little farther away when they line up, they may throw something at you. It all depends on the distance you are away and uh, when you line up vertically. Now, the princess here at the end, she has all ranged attacks. She can attack you from anywhere. She never has to get close enough to you to attack you. All she has to do is line up on the Y. The attacks that she can do are the force push, the flying lady. She flies across the room and she throws a, a fireball down. The fire across the ground, the flaming bird, and the snake uh, fire serpent demon dickhead. And this one is when she pops out of the ground and stabs you in your in your butt with her fire snake thing. So that covers the attacks that she can actually uh the attacks that she can actually do to us. So we know those things are for sure. As soon as she lines up, she's going to do one of those things. So let me show you how I deal with all of those attacks. Uh, while still being able to do damage with her and pretty much guaranteeing that she can't hit me. And let's deal with a serpent here. What I want to do is I want to do spinning attacks and get her into a corner. Aha! There we are. I'm going to do a quick save right here. So once she's in the corner, <clears throat> this is where the magic happens. You can choose the right or the left. It will alternate if she decides to do her fly across the room strategy. But I want to offset myself just a little bit from her on the Y so that she has to walk down towards me. That gives me a better chance that my spinning attack will land. Because if she lines up with you and she's within range, your spin attack will hit the force push attack the fire bird attack, and the little fire across the ground thing. Any of those attacks, she does somewhat slowly, and you can hit her. See if we get one. There's one. So that was the force push attack. I was able to land the spin attack. It's going to place her right about in the same spot, and I'm going to repeat this process. There's only two attacks that you won't do damage to her on. Uh, one of them is if she decides to fly across the room in which we'll deal with that in a second. The other one is if she turns into a flaming serpent. But when she does the serpent, she goes into the ground. She's going to be in the ground for about three seconds. What I will do is when I land, I'll go halfway down on the screen and then back up. As I'm going up, she will go back into a serpent and I can try to spin kick her back to the wall. That's essentially the strategy. Uh, let me work it a little bit from here and show you. So we're going to offset a little, spin. Offset a little, spin. Offset a little, spin. Offset a little, spin. There's the serpent, down to the middle, back up, over, spin. Offset a little, spin. Serpent, down to the middle, back up, over, spin. Serpent again, down to the middle, back up, over, serpent, 
There it is, down in the middle. Back up, over. I'm always, when I do the serpent, I'm always offsetting from her to the, the left or to the opposite direction of the corner. So if I do land a spin, it does push her back into the corner. Like that, offset a little. Again, offset a little. There we go. That's what I was hoping for. So we've went through the gambit of attacks that she can do, and you can see we have almost complete control. There's one that you may not see in there. Uh, sometimes she can duck your spin. But when she ducks and you're in the air, when you land, she will stand up and do one of the other attacks. You have time to jump and spin again. So essentially, if she ducks, you're just going to immediately jump and spin again and try again. It's almost just like, try again, reset, uh, and then you just go right back into the pattern. This one, however, is the one where she can troll you just a little bit. You'll notice that when I'm in the top corner <clears throat> and I'm offsetting with her, I'm offsetting down a little bit and then offsetting up a little bit, offsetting down. I'm staying in this top corner. That's so if she chooses to fly across the room, I have the most vertical distance to travel to get as close to her now again as I can before she can line up with me vertically and attack. If you've done it right, you should be able to get just there to do another spin. And then just like before, we offset and now we can throw her into this corner and do the same thing. We're just gonna pound her in the corner. If you do not, however, time this part, it's great that it's doing it again. Thank you so much. Let me save it there again. Uh, if she flies across and let's say you don't move quite quick enough and she's going to line up with you, you can try to kick, but if she turns into a serpent, she's going to hit you. So that is where the trickiest part of the run is going to be, is in when she flies across the room, you need to get there quick enough. If you stay on the top while you're offsetting and, and, and hitting her, you should have enough time to run down, get lined up, and spin. That'll, that, I mean, that will save you. You can push her back into this corner. We're gonna offset again. There's a serpent, down to the middle, back up. Push her into the corner, serpent again, down to the middle, back up, corner, serpent again. So this is the randomness, but the nice thing is, is it doesn't matter what she chooses to do. We have a reaction for everything that she can do. And as long as you don't miss any spins, here we go, and jump spin, to turn into a serpent, that's nice. As long as you don't miss your jump spins, back down. Oop, I missed the jump, I got lucky. She's being an idiot with these. There we go, back up. There's the, uh, there's her ducking. You saw when she ducked, I just moved. Ooh, ooh, so very close. Got her! And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you can beat uh, the final boss in Double Dragon 3 without taking any damage. Now, with some practice, you should be able to do it without damage, but I tell you what, with very little practice, you'll at least be able to beat her. Because if you're playing this from that casual perspective, and you're just jumping into this fight, it seems outrageously complicated and random and it really seems like there's nothing you can do to to be safe but as you can see we can i hope that you guys found this uh, helpful and we will see you guys in the next explanation if you'd like to see more uh no damage playthroughs uh i live stream every day on all sorts of platforms i'm sure you can find them